Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Beersheba. Right now we're located about 70 miles south of Jerusalem in the Negev area, uh, southern part of uh, Israel. And here is the place where Beersheba was located, of which the patriarchs uh, lived, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. It all took place uh, right here. And Abraham was called roughly 4,000 years ago, 2,000 years before Christ, to come to the Holy Land, to leave everything that he had, and come here by faith. And God said, I will make of you a great nation, and I will give you a land. So the Abrahamic covenant encompasses two significant factors. One, that God would give Abraham, because of his faith, a nation. He would make out of his seed a great nation of which we see today. The nation of Israel exists as a result of that promise. And also God says, I will give you a land. And we see today that God has chosen this land to write uh, his message through an actual place. His message to mankind, he wanted to communicate through a people and a land. And this people and this land, in essence, represents all of us, God's message uh, to all of us. So, almost 2,000 years before Christ, God called Abraham to leave Mesopotamia, to leave his family, his possessions, and journey to a new land with the promise that his descendants would become a great nation like the sand on the sea. And Abraham obeyed, and he settled here in Beersheba. We're at Tel Beersheba, and you'll be seeing some uh, uh, video and photos of this Tel, plus the surrounding Negev area where Abraham uh, settled. So, Abraham obeyed God, and he settled here in Beersheba, and here he dug a well for water. Abraham's well, on which he depended to water his flocks, was seized, however, by servants of the king of the Philistines, Abimelech. Uh, uh, Abraham complained to Abimelech and struck an oath with the Philistine king, giving him seven ewe lambs for affirming that Abraham had dug the well. To symbolize the covenant affirming his ownership of the well, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree and called uh, thereupon the name of the Lord, the everlasting God, as found in Genesis 21. And right here you can see Abraham's well. So Beersheba means well of oath or well of seven lambs. So when this covenant and this agreement that uh, Abraham made with Abimelech, the king, uh, the name Beersheba comes from that. It says in Hebrew, the word Sheba means oath or seven. And so it was given the name Beersheba. So it comes from the covenant that Abraham and uh, King uh, Abimelech made together. Uh, they, they gave seven ewe lambs, and so out of that comes the name uh, Beersheba. When the writers of Scripture wanted to speak of Israel from the north to the, to the south, they would often use the expression from Dan, the northernmost city in Israel, to Beersheba, the southernmost city. So from Dan to Beersheba encompassed all of Israel, basically. I mean, it was a little bit beyond that, but that was a common phrase used to refer to all of Israel. Abraham and his wife Sarah, uh, here in Beersheba, evicted uh, her slave girl Hagar and Hagar's son Ishmael to wander in the wilderness right here. But God promised a, a Hagar he would also make Ishmael, uh, Ishmael's descendants a great nation as recounted in Genesis 21. Isaac, who built an altar to the Lord here at Beersheba, also had a dispute with the Philistines over water, and he too resolved it with a covenant with Abimelech as found in Genesis 26. Isaac's son Jacob stole the birthright from his brother Esau while the family camped at Beersheba, as found in Genesis 28. Many significant things happened right here in this area. When the elderly Israel, or Jacob, formerly Jacob, was on his way to Egypt, he stopped at Beersheba to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. God spoke to him in visions of the night and encouraged him on his journey, as recounted in Genesis 46. So when uh, Jacob was going down to Egypt to be with Joseph, after he was reconciled to Joseph, it was here in Beersheba that he offered a sacrifice and called upon the name of the Lord. It was from Beersheba that Abraham journeyed with his son Isaac to Mount Moriah at Jerusalem where God had ordered him to sacrifice his son Isaac as a burnt offering. So it was from right here that God 
uh, visited Abraham and says, I want you to offer your only son, Isaac, of whom uh, Abraham had waited countless years. And his, his uh, wife, Sarah, they had waited countless years and they finally got a son, Isaac. And it was here that God said, I want you to go to Mount Moriah, which is in Jerusalem, on which is located now the Temple Mount of which um, the temple was built that Solomon built. So Mount Moriah, uh, is the exact place that Solomon would build the temple in Jerusalem where countless sacrifices would be made later on. And these, the most notable being the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. So it was at Mount Moriah that, that God said to Abraham, go and offer your son Isaac. Little did Abraham know that that would be the place that God would have the, uh, have the temple built of which thousands of sacrifices would be made of upon which Christ, our sacrifice, was um, appeared as well. So let's take a look at, at a moving story of Abraham. Uh, Abraham is called in Scripture uh, a man of faith. It was his faith. He is, in, in essence, is called our father of faith. Why? Because he is our example of a man who uh, had faith in God and who was willing to follow God regardless of the cost. Abraham gave up first his country. He gave up his, uh, his people. He gave up his culture. And he followed God to a place just believing, walking by faith and not by sight. And so he came to this land, the holy land of Israel, and God says, I will make you a great nation and a great people. So he came here. So scripture refers to him all throughout the New Testament, especially as the father of faith, our father of faith. So there's a story in scripture that really summarizes and really gives us an insight into Abraham's faith and how much he really loved God. And so this, is, this takes place in Genesis 22. And this is where God said to Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, and I want you to take him to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him there to me. So uh, here it is. Here's the account. It says in Genesis 22, 1, after these days, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a, burnt sac as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So what we see here is it says that God tested Abraham. He tested him to see whom he loved more. Would it be God that he loved more or would it be his new son that he loved so deeply and he had waited so long for and Sarah had waited for so long for and in that culture, in that Hebrew culture, to not have a son was a total disgrace. It was humiliating not to have an offspring. It's a test here. So, uh, go to Mount Moriah, go to the land I will show you, to the mountain I will show you. So what does Abraham do? Well, most of us probably would have thought about it, we would have prayed about it, we would have gotten advice, and all of these are good things, but Abraham knew God and God had spoke to him so clearly that he did not need any confirmation. So what did Abraham do? It says, so Abraham rose early. Early the next morning, he didn't wait around, he wasn't slothful in his obedience. He rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and uh, rose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. So they traveled for three days, probably by camel, maybe they walked. Uh, but Abraham and his son and some servants went, and they went uh, about 60, 50, 60 miles north to Mount Moriah. It was a three-day three -day journey. And can you imagine on that journey how many times Abraham thought about what he was doing, about the reality that I'm going to sacrifice my son. I am really going to do this. And am I going to do this? I'm sure he looked over at his son countless times thinking that maybe that would be uh, the last time, the last journey that he had with his son Isaac. He was willing and he had every intent to sacrifice Isaac, his only son, to God because he was a man of faith who loved God. And the Hebrews said he even believed that, that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. So he had tremendous faith. So uh, verse 5 says, Then Abraham said to his 
his young men, stay here with the donkey and the boy and I will go over there and worship and come back again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they, they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, my father, and he said, here I am my son. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told them, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. So they both go up the mountain together to the place where later the temple would be built, where Christ would be sacrificed close by, where thousands of uh, animals would be sacrificed uh, to the Lord. He went up there with his son, ready to kill him uh, with a knife, laid him on the altar, bound him, and was ready to kill him. In verse 10, it says, Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know, it was God speaking through the angels, For now I know that you fear God. Now I know, other translations say, Now I know you love me. Now I know you fear me. Now I know that you will obey me and you love me more than any possession in your life. There is nothing, Abraham, between me and you. You have shown me, Abraham, that you love me more than any earthly possession, even your son, whom you have waited uh, many, many years for. So Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket, miraculously provided by the Lord, caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said today, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself, I have sworn. Now God is going to renew his pact, his covenant with Abraham. He says, And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven, and he said, By myself I have so sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offering shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. In you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Today you, if you're watching this, me, we are all blessed in Abraham because of his faith, because through his lineage would come Christ. Through him, the door is opened, this avenue of faith. And in the Old Testament, everyone was saved by faith in the same as in the New Testament. Sometimes people get confused and they think in the Old Testament people were saved by the sacrificial system. The sacrificial system was just a step of obedience. It was just a way of showing God your faith, just fulfilling commands that God had given. Today, we are saved by faith. In the Old Testament, everyone was saved by faith. Throughout all mankind, throughout mankind's history, everyone has been uh, saved through faith, through grace, and what God has done. God's provision of sacrifices in the Old Testament, and God's once and for all provision of His, His sacrifice of Christ in the New Testament, which fulfills all of the Old Covenant. So, we see in this great man of faith a tremendous example a man of faith who loved God more than anything and who was willing to uh, remove anything that might be in the way between he and God. And it also shows that God tested Abraham to see if there might be something that Abraham loved more than him. Uh, in the Ten Commandments, it begins by saying, God is a jealous God. And God does not want anything in between 
our lives and Him. He wants a direct, pure relationship. And so when things get in the way, He will oftentimes test us. He will remove those things. He will take them from us. He will see if we love them more than Him. Sometimes He'll take them away for a moment to see. God is always probing our hearts, always looking to see, is there something or someone that you or I love more than God? So, what about us? Well, do I understand that God tests me in the same way often as He did I, uh, Abraham? Do I understand that God's greatest question for me is, how much do you love me? And is there anyone or anything that you love more than me, God asked? And do I have anything in my life that stands between God and me? And so I should search my heart, is there anything, God, that I might be loving more than you? And God will do that searching as well. So that's the primary question that we see in Abraham's life, this man of faith. And do I know what my Isaac is? Abraham's test was Isaac because that's whom Abraham loved deeply. So what's my Isaac? Is there something in my life that might be my Isaac? Is it my job? Is it my family? Is it um, some possession I have? Is it my health? Is it some ability? Some skill? Is it my appearance? What is it that might be my Isaac that I'm tempted or maybe I do love more than God? So that's the big question we see at this place in Beersheba where God tested Abraham and where Abraham and the patriarchs lived. So, thank you for watching this video. We hope you've been challenged by it. God bless you, and thanks again for watching.